Capella for a new challenge. I'm going to attempt to earn one million dollars in 100 days in RimWorld. How? The answer is simple. The answer is robots. If you want money, simply bow to your robot overlords. That's right, your robot overlords. Green, as they say, follows gray. Alphabetically, the green will follow the middle. And so my plan for this challenge is to create a specialized team of colonists who will inevitably replace themselves with android equivalents. We'll start out with 13 colonists. Challenge man is the generalist. He can help with everything. Hunt man is a hunter. Tamer is a tamer. Tank is our melee fighter. The rock is our miner. Uh, apple seed is our planter. Crafter is our crafter. 200 IQ guy is our researcher. WebMD is our doctor. Chef is our chef. Builder Bo is our construction worker. I ran out of characters, don't ask. Bob Ross is our tortured artist. And Casanova is our warden and traitor. There's a lot of mods in this playthrough too, so look below for those. I recommend all of them. All right, we've spawned in with our team. Our total worth is around $30,000. Everybody has zero stats and specialized passions depending upon what their job is. I'm just gonna go ahead and designate some early tasks for them. We've got this mystery factory down here, so I'm gonna send 200 IQ guy to figure out what we've got. This is a decent factory, but we could do better, so I think I'm going to dismantle all of this. We can also start to mine out some of the nodes in these nearby cliffs. We've got steel, compacted machinery, some jade in here that's valuable, gold hidden in here. Although this factory was kind of a bust, we do have this steam geyser nearby where we can use for geothermal power. Only one problem is that you need eight skill in construction to make that, and we just don't have that yet. So let's get to grinding some stats. I'm gonna set a stockpile zone up inside, and I'm gonna deconstruct everything on the map. We've got some ancient ruins, we could use those. Deconstruct the floors. And we've got some fertile soil here to the south. Although it's a bit of a hike, I like the openness of this field, and I think it'll do well when we scale up our operation. I'm gonna set out my first grow zone here of rice. And for the first couple days, we'll be hungry, so we'll just harvest these berry bushes. We'll also hunt down all of the weak local wildlife. We can set up crafting and butcher spots inside. And we aren't really limited by our known technologies, but we have no crafting skill yet, so we're stuck on clubs. And since we won't be able to sleep in beds tonight, we're going to sleep 13 men abreast on the floor. That ought to do it. Let's get to work. And before I forget, we're setting out each colonist onto his own most useful priorities in terms of work. Some characters are really going to progress fast. We can see Appleseed has already made plants level one. He's pretty much just gonna be constantly grinding his skills. Whereas other characters, it might take them longer to develop. And good, we're making our first levels and everything. Normally you'd be limited to only 4,000 skill a day, but because I have unmaxed skills, He's still learning fast. I don't know why it still shows this on the uh, menu. He is gaining skill fast though. And we finally crafted a bow. We can equip that to Huntman so that he can start getting food for everyone. So he's just gonna go over here and start shooting every wild animal he sees. <laughs> It took him like one shot to get shooting level one. He may be inaccurate now, but later on he'll be a sharpshooter. Yeah, later on. Later. And although we didn't accomplish much on the first day, we did grind skills and Builder Bow is now at level 5 in construction. And since they all have completely overpowered traits, they can sleep soundly. 13 men in a room. On a middle floor. Naked paradise. They are unhappy about their nudity and they may be starving, but our net worth went up about $2,000, probably just from claimed stuff, not really anything we're producing yet, but it is a good sign. And our builders already got three batteries up for when we get power. Next, we can put a kitchen in this really cramped corner. Eventually this will improve, but hey, it's a start. Chef is bringing back food we can eat now. We're going to need to eat our horse for food. We'll also get out a butcher table ASAP. And now we've got a whole meal workflow going. You can just mine these out and make them slightly larger. And great, now we're not starving to death. We had one mental break today, but we're progressing along nicely and all of our colonists are grinding their own skills. Huntman's already made shooting level seven. Two days in and our net worth went up just a couple hundred dollars today. We can start to make some tribal wear so that we don't all have to run around in the nude. And we can set Bo off to making some subsurface conduits. 
It's a lot of work, it doesn't use a lot of materials, and it grinds a lot of his skill. Next, we'll order the construction of some actual beds. And last but not least, to get our construction up, we can just smooth out some walls. And we've reached construction eight. Now it's time to build that power source. And hopefully he won't fail this. It's a rather large construction project, but we do have tons of materials. And there, it's made. This should start to power up our place. That's more than enough. And we can start charging some in our batteries too. The very next thing we'll do is to just build a comms console. It's day three and our wealth hasn't done much to progress either. Maybe a couple hundred more dollars today. But we can move some guys into actual beds now. We can also get underway with stone cutting. Stone cutting as well as art. That'll get rid of all this idleness among our workers. Next, I think that we can build a path to our fields from our butchering area. This makes sense because it'll be easier to bring food into our kitchen. We're able to reorganize our beds again. And now we can just start carving stone blocks pretty much forever, yeah. Or at least until we have some absurd number like 2,000. That's good. Now we can set off Bob Ross to make grand and large sculptures for the next few minutes. He, he can pretty much just grind making sculptures forever. Yeah, just do that forever. We're now at four days and we've made maybe another $2,000 between the last two days. And it may not be much, but we'll get three tables for them to sit at. This will just give them all a good mood boost. Great, now with Bob Ross sculpting away, and good, it looks like the rock is just finishing off on this passageway between the kitchen and the farm. That's great, we can roof that up and then add in a couple entrances here too. All right, now it's just getting ready for our trader. I think these faction names are completely fine. Omifanunt and Unshotten. We've got a fire, look at how quickly they'll beat it out. These guys are very good at getting out fires. Really should just have become firemen, all of them. And we've got a shuttle crash, a lot of organs have fallen out of the sky. This could be a good opportunity for our doctors. All right, WebMD, get to work. Save them. Somebody save them. We can also repurpose these people. And that's great, we're getting our first harvest too. Right in time. This is good medical experience for WebMD because we're gonna be taking a lot of prisoners throughout this playthrough. Oh, and I didn't notice this. Our orbital trade beacon wasn't actually work. Okay, that should get us access to traders faster now. And there we go, sure enough. Uh, I was scratching my head over that. I used a mod to make bulk goods traders, like, pretty much always available. Alright, bulk goods is pretty good to start. Let's get Casanova on that. And there we go, Plasteel, that's what we need. And we need a lot of it. Alright, except... And there comes the Plasteel. Alright, we're going to start mining resources straight out of the ground. I think it's elegant if we do it this way. So I'm gonna start off with some automatic drills right in our main room. This thing is just gonna spit up rock chunks from the earth. This is gonna start the first in our production chain along this room, and eventually we'll move out of this room and make a new one. So like I was saying, I tried this challenge before, but you really can't speed the pace of your growth unless if you designate everything out for robots to do for you. Even if you have 13 extremely overpowered colonists. And I guess we'll mine for marble just because it's really valuable. Limestone is also nice. It's a hard stone. But that's one way of making money now. To speed up our growing, we're also just gonna start tilling the soil here. This is a feature of vanilla plants expanded, but one I really like. And it'll give Builder Bo something to do. Ultimately, we're gonna want to start to expedite our work out to machines. Traders should have all the components we need. Here come more advanced components we'll need to set up more factories. This one in particular is one of my favorites, the steel extractor. This is going to take all of those spit up chunks from the ground and no matter what the chunk type is, it'll just grind it out as steel. And there goes our next piece of the factory. Limestone goes in and steel comes out. Now Chef has a surplus of food to work with and we're not worried about starvation anymore. And traders just keep coming good. We're gonna need this constant flow. Let's start getting a real dining room ready next. Or just a generalized rec room down here. Everyone is asleep again. $44,000. We are starting to make a lot more money now. We're 150% of what we started with, but it's time to think about new dining areas and component assembly. All right, we've updated our dining room. Next, it's time to get on some component assembly. We've finished tilling the fields, and now we complete our component assembler next. That marks a three-part factory chain. Fortunately, it takes only 12 steel to do this. Now that's one full week of progress. Uh, actually, just over one week. We've gone from about 30,000 now to 47,000, and it's starting to pick up speed. We're also, we're also uh, getting magnificent sculptures now built. This one is called uh, The Darkness by Builder Bo. He's not been doing, whatever, all right. I guess uh, 
Bob Ross is just naming things after people now. He's getting very good at art after all these years. Now a mech hive ship is... We have a cruiser uh, landing near us. As far as I can tell, this isn't actually in our part of the world. This is in a different part of the world. Um, they might come to kill us. Hopefully not right now, because we have a lot of work to do. While on the one hand, I'd like to do this all automatically, I do also recognize the need for tilled soil. Uh, right about right about here, between these two geysers, we want to set off our next shrimp. And here we're going to start growing psychoid. Psychoid is immensely profitable. Uh, there's a little bit of processing work to be done here, but yeah, this is going to make us a lot of money over time. We'll till the soil and get the psychoid leaves in the ground. And now that we have a surplus of lime, limestone, we can start to box ourselves in. Ideally, we can start building into the mountain for more defense. Next, it's time to get started on a workshop. It's now the 10th of December, around midday. I think I'm just gonna let one day go by and see how much I can get done. Feast your eyes. Tomorrow, it will be improved. All right, it's been about 24 hours, so let's go over the changes. We're really at the center of a map in a horrible location. We need to move further into the mountain. So I built a bunch of spike traps. We'll eventually uninstall these. In fact, I think I'm going to do this right now. Um, and we'll just plant these wherever an enemy comes. If we have these walls, we'll have plenty of time at least to see where they're coming from for people who come in off a map edge. We've prepared more fields for planting smoke leaf and we've tilled this soil. A mature flesh beast wandered onto the map. There's some strange stuff from alpha animals here. Really love alpha animals, but some of them are kind of threatening and I don't know about all of them. Uh, so that's there. Probably causing all of this blood. Other than that, what else have I done? Oh yeah, I'm replacing all of the lights, or at least the standing lamps with wall lights, just because they use up less power. What are we at now? Not much wealth progress today, but that's uh, to be expected. We've doubled our wealth since the first day after about only 11 days. So I'll think about it like that because I think this will be exponential. All right, I'm going to give them some time to make progress back in a few. All of this is now enough to build an auto miner. Auto miners are effectively one new worker in our colony. So while these stone chunk gatherers are good, it would be nice to have someone else who could mine out the rest of the map besides the rock. Good as the rock may be. So with that, I send out Builder Bo. And the auto miner's gonna need to charge up some power, but then it should go out and mine out everything we've already designated for the rock to do. So this is one new person, effectively. And the more people we have, the more money we can make. I mean, this entire map is just going to be harvested by the time we're done. So we might as well just get as many as we can. Plus, it adds to our wealth overall. That did knock us down about a thousand, but I think it's going to be a worthy investment. Yeah, here we go. Teamwork. Although the auto miner may not be as fast as the rock, it's still helpful. Now we play the waiting game. We're going to harvest a massive crop of psychoid and use this to make enough money to pay off a whole new set of machines. When we have those new machines and other parts for our factory. Today we ran into some power outage issues. We tried to build a subsurface conduit all the way over to our new geothermal generator, but Builder Bo went on a, well, he went on a mental break. He's been entombed underground and it sort of turned into a positive feedback loop. Having this nasty case of muscle parasites that's inflicted us isn't helping. But on the bright side, Appleseed did manage to plant an entire new field of psychoid, which will translate to great profits soon. $78,675. We also managed to ditch our old storage, and now we have everything in these nice steel skips. Day 17. I think it's fine to hunt down these boomalopes because, well, we've isolated the area in which they can explode. So if Huntman causes an explosion, that really won't cause any issues for our base. Uh, it appears to be hunting down the other boomalopes. All right, here they go down. Get ready for the explosion. And it looks like this one is just setting itself on fire. And wait for it. Oh God, oh that's horrible. That reclaims much of our home area. Day 17 and 18, $83,629. Today we connected our geothermal power to our grid. Another ship landed on our planet, a carrier of mechanoids. And unfortunately one of these ships is very close to our base. Uh, they might come and you know, try to kill us. I'm counting on some more time before that happens. Right now, we really aren't ready for them. Today, crafters started setting up a bunch of steel helmets so we can replace our cowboy hats with, uh, 
Steel helmets. Day 19, $88,500. Today we built a flat screen television to up our recreation faster. I just find that my colonists are spending too much time talking to each other at the table and I'd prefer that they watch TV. Purely out of fear of mechanoids, I'm now making uranium maces too. We spotted some yaks today, a chance to actually start taming some animals. And I missed what happened, but this mature flesh beast died. I guess he got into a fight with this cougar and this mega sloth. It looks like they all just kind of bit each other to death. Yeah, the mature Flesh Beast, uh, stabbed the Mega Sloth, but then it bled to death. Same thing with the Cougar, it looks like. It was punched by the Flesh Beast. And then the Flesh Beast, I imagine it was difficult fighting these two animals. Yeah, alright. Blood for the Blood God. That's great. More food, and I'm less afraid of the wildlife now. Otherwise, it's going swimmingly. Kind of fun to watch them carry things back. Like there's people under there. I wonder what this thing will yield when we... All right, that's a lot of light leather. Not bad for more crafting. Crafter guy hit level eight. Tank can get the plate armor and the new steel helmets we've been building. So now he's looking much stronger, as well as equip this uranium mace. So now he's pretty much perfectly anti-mechanoid. And now we have fabrication cabinets and tool cabinets to help us make advanced components faster. Now we're on day 22. Where are... We're at, uh, well, not even day 22 yet. $96,179. We have our first major harvest of psychoid and smoke leaf. This is a big boon. This is gonna be a lot of money once we process it all. We've planted Devil Strand here in the north, and we're finally crafting some major componented componentage. The next move is gonna bring over to all those psychoid and smoke leaf into our drug lab. This is probably gonna be the most profitable enterprise of our entire base. Uh, and this is gonna be the main thing we use to sell the traders, so smoke leaf and psychoid in here. That also gives us enough to finish off this hamper. We finally summited a hundred thousand dollars at day 22.7. $101,715. I mean, in real life, all of this stuff is worth far more than a hundred thousand dollars, but all right game an entire farm with uh, an illicit manufacturing business. I guess that's fine. Yeah, oh, this is great right, day 23 hundred two thousand dollars. We'll be rich in no time at this rate I think we can pretty much just get continuous smoke leaf and psychite production and there it is there it is And I think you can see already how immensely <laughs> Productive this is becoming. We've had some iron husk beetles join, whatever these even are. What are these worth? 3,000 each. That's $6,000 that just wandered into our colony. Fantastic. Oh my god. Obviously, I can't even care for these things. Let's get rid of them. More money. We need, uh, we need advanced components, mech components, all of that. All that junk. Plasteel. Don't question it. Don't question it. I'm sold. 305 plasteel. That's more than we need. Actually, that's less than we need, but, um, it's still good. Man, Aerofleets, even these animals can't get, possibly get past their walls. They're so thick. Oh, that's weird. Day 24. Our mining into the mountain has uncovered a new, like a hollow underneath it all. There's a, there's a gulch in this mountain. I mean, a gulch, uh, whatever it is, it's, uh, it's more area for land expansion. And I think we could move our factory operation over here. Make all of this into defense. Uh, I think we're just gonna get rid of all the nature here. I kind of like it though. I might leave some. We have mad gigantelopes. Ha. Also trapped on the other side of our wall. This is, uh, I think that's just safe. Yeah, we never have to go out there ever. Pretty much evaded all of these bad animal events. But I think it's safer to move deeper beneath this mountain if we want to survive. And also put our most valuable stuff far away from this mountain where we could get infestations. Well, that was a massive trade. We just got tons more plasteel, mechanoid components, and silver, but we traded away all of our steel. We didn't really need the steel. Uh, the preparations are complete. Day 25 is coming to a close. We have $101,000 again. But it doesn't really make a big difference because once we get this next piece of the factory up and running will be self-sufficient in the way of plasteel. We just need to get down a couple more floors and then we can build this plasteel forge. Now with the floor finished, here it is, plasteel forge. And we can start to fill out this 
section with more concrete tiles. Might as well just make it easy for them to walk back and forth. Here goes nothing. Masterwork sculpture. Oh, Jesus. That could really change our fortunes. Is that reflect? Okay, that's gonna be worth a lot. Yeah, this is worth $2,000. Alright, I'm installing that. That's gonna vastly add to the beauty. This thing is majestic. Brings the room up to unbelievably impressive. Another cruiser has landed somewhere in the world. Oh, yeah. Build that plasteel forge. Yeah, this place is safe in here. We need to put more stuff in here. And now we just load up the forge. And that ought to do it. That gives us marble blocks. And now we create plasteel every five hours. I know. I don't feel safe at all. This place is still just, uh, yeah, I'm gonna need a lot. I'm gonna need a lot to feel safer. All that spits out 20 plasteel from our resources. This is a rare achievement, but one that's very valuable, because now we can make weapons and armor. And I think we need a variety of weapons next, since we're so unskilled. Grenade launcher, heavy machine gun, a battle rifle, ooh, a carbine. I'll take an auto cannon. Uh, yeah, uh, heavy flamer sounds good. This sounds extremely threatening. Flak goggles, obviously we'll all need some of those. Yeah, we'll keep working on it. We'll also build a very light defense along the outside of our base. This should be enough to start. You know, with all of this work, we're gonna need more crafters around here. Let's build a bot that can just make components. That's how we do it. Now we've got an assembler. Yeah, look at that thing. He wants to create. In fact, I might as well get two, because we're just gonna keep crafting and crafting. There's another one, too. That increase our worth. No, day 28, going on 29. Still 110k, though. And it's gonna start to speed up now. You mark my words. Uh, we got good quality on the grenade launcher. Let's give that to Huntman. I think he should have the grenade launcher. That thing looks badass. All right, it's time to test this thing out, but not without some help. I think I want the rock to take the HMG. That just seems like the right weapon for him. Oops, I got the wrong mechs. Well, these are still good at constructing. But we could set them to till the fields. Speed up our crop growth. All right, yeah, there they go. Okay, till the fields, bots. Oh, this is awesome. Look what they're doing. Huntman gets a battle rifle to hunt animals with. Okay, now I need to test some of these things. They're just too good. I mean, we have these machine guns and battle rifles. And there's this mega sloth right over there. Uh, I mean, I think that this is fine. I'm not going to hell. All right, let's shoot that thing. Oh, we didn't even anger. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. Huntman is very good with this. He might be able to hunt more dangerous animals now. And dangerous animals he'll hunt. He shall hunt all of the dangerous animals. So, so many from which to choose. My God, look at Bob, Ro Jesus Christ. I mean, Huntman, not Bob Ross. So good, Huntman. Oh my god, that's the autocannon. Jesus Christ, look at this. Oh, Jesus. I can't just not use it now. Let's just... Oh my god, that's horrible. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'm never gonna go back to vanilla weapons again. The challenge man is hunting with an autocannon. That's bananas. That's so cool. There it is. Fully powered. We have a uranium slug rifle. I don't even know what this does. Let's give it to Appleseed. Oh, here goes challenge man. Oh my god, that poor creature. What sound is it even making? Permanent gunshot injury. Oh my, it'll be out of its misery soon. Look at that. Another grand sculpture. This place is a nightmare. If a wanderer is joined. Alexei. Fun-loving, insatiable brawler. No, this challenge isn't about you, man. Yeah, banishment. Banishment. Get out of here with your not being one of us. Day 32, $120,420. We're crafting faster now. Oh my god. Mad Jack Antelope. Fortunately, Challenge Man and Hunt Man are right there. This should be interesting. Here goes one. And that's... So oh my god. They are really overpowered now. These rifles are just so good. These are like modern infantry rifles. Shit. Dude, you are gonna be very careful there. Oh, for God's sake, r uh, run. Yeah, run. Oh, you are gonna get effed up. Yeah, be very careful. Nothing but some bruises. And here comes a manhunter pack. F devil sheep, you devil strand sheep. Yeah, everybody run away. Jesus Christ, those are some very aggressive sheep. Fortunately, they'll be very valuable. Everybody just get home. Get home, for God's sake. Oh, what is gonna happen with these sheep? They're just gonna be forced to stand out here because I've closed the gates. All right, everybody stay away from those sheep. Yeah, not okay. Uh, we're gonna just have to, oh my God, how are we gonna deal with this? Yeah, they're just gonna be, yeah. Burn in hell, sheep, burn in hell. I don't even, these exist? Well, fortunately, that'll be a massive amount of devil. That might make us millionaires just by killing these sheep if we manage to do it. How are we gonna address this pro- I mean, we could just leave them out there to fight whoever comes to kill us, right? 
That's a lot. Holy cow, that might be the best thing that's happened yet. Thank God I built that wall. I think the next thing, we're just gonna strip mine around here. We've gotta, uh, we've gotta figure out what other m minerals are in the mountains. So there, there's so much we don't know still. Oh my God, cargo pods with halberds and charge SMGs. I will take them. Every penny counts. Every penny counts. Uh, we get some fires. We get some fires going on. Might wanna... It's a lot going on on this map now. I like it. This is my goal in the beginning anyway. It's what I wanted. It's what I wanted. Kind of fun to watch them beat out the fires as a group like that. Yeah. Go ahead, guys. It's like having an ant farm or something, except... Without the ants. We're really good. All right, we finally got our second automatic drill up and running. This is gonna speed up our whole process way better now. Manhunter pack again of just goats. Okay. Also, also at a map edge, we've sealed off. Ha! Uh, so many advantages to sealing off the map edges with just impassable walls. It's the giant Great Wall of China strategy. Yes, just yell into the void, goats, along with the devil strand sheep who now sleep soundly. Here in the north, though, they are infested with scaria. Look at all of the cycloid leaves we've harvested. It's time to build the second steel fabricator. Raise the factory. There we go, double production chain. Day 35, $135,083. This factory is truly a beautiful spectacle now. This is transcending all of my expectations of what good could be. We won't even need to manufacture components anymore. We'll just have machines do all the work. Right now, Crafter, after all, is the bottleneck, and we just Oh my god, look at that flak goggles. He has flak goggles. That's amazing. It even equipped- it even shields him from the heat and the cold. So cool. So cool. And there is another ship landed on our planet. Uh, that's nowhere near us. That's fine. They're gonna keep upgrading. That's fine. Import more steel. And then it's time to build another component assembler. End of day 37, $136,807.80. We're getting to work on our second component assembler, and now it's ready. All right, here goes nothing. Another steel extractor. We've also got these new bullpup rifles. And now almost everybody has flak goggles to protect their eyes. We still need something to protect their bodies uh, in general. But business is booming. Business is booming. It's day, uh... Well, the economy in the world just crashed. We might buy some of these bonds if we start to make enough money. We got 138,000 again. It's around day 40, but we're gonna start to pick up pace, and it's gonna be exponential once we start getting enough steel out of the ground. And there it is. Enough to craft our whole factory. It's beautiful. Okay. Our factories are now 100% efficient. All the component creation is done in them. And we've got steel coming out, like a flow of steel. It's too much work for our people now. The floors are actually dirty. We're gonna need more bots to haul. Look, it's a bot building another bot. That's- that's Inception. It's a bot building another bot. Oh my god, hauler bots. What's coming next? Day 41, 146k. Oh my god, masterwork wooden sculpture. What is that even worth? $2,000. We are making so much money now. We found compact- ah, yes. Compacted plasteel and more steel. This is great. That's wonderful news. And there seems to be a lot of it. That's where we build more auto haulers. We just need these things to do our work. That's two haulers. For God's sake, it's over 150k now. Ibex Ram Revenge. Well, that won't be so bad, right? Uh, okay. Maybe it will. Maybe it will. Maybe not. Bob Ross has maximized his artistic levels. What even happened here? I legit don't know what happened here. Did this thing eat everyone? All right, we're using rim stocks right here, or otherwise known as Yayo's Bank. Gentle Tribe war bonds have gone down recently because they lost a war. I'm taking a risk here, but I think that these will appreciate a lot. They're pretty low price right now, and we just went through an economic crisis, so I accept. So we're buying a war bond from the Gentle Tribe. May not be money right now, but that's effectively another 10,000 in the bank at some point. We'll just create a spot here to store war bonds. We're gonna buy a lot more of these and it's gonna help us make more money. They look kind of strange, but that's worth like $10,000. I don't know how this is gonna be reflected in our total wealth, because it is worth a lot. But as you can see, the Gentle Tribe just suffered a massive, massive loss. These were worth about 24,000, so I'm expecting this will be back up at some point. And we'll try to sell it when it's expensive. Or at least buy better goods with it. In the meantime, we'll start to make Siege Breaker armor. Extremely strong power armor so that nothing can hit us. 
Uh, if we get raided, I really don't want everybody to die. So here goes nothing. Six advanced components, 160 plasteel, 40 uranium, and two components. I'm gonna make one suit of this stuff. Here goes nothing. First one's gonna be a lot of work, but we'll put it on to probably Huntman. He's probably the best one off with Siege Breaker armor. And then we're just gonna run him into danger. <laughs> and once we finish this stuff, I guess the value's gonna go up. Good quality, too. 925 worth. All right, that's not bad. All right, hunt man, put that on. I guess he can't even wear his flat goggles anymore. Jesus Christ, that's badass. Except the hair still shows through. I gotta get the mod that fixes that. There we go, that's better, it's fixed. Jesus Christ, it's probably bad to just sleep in Siege Breaker armor, but it's really not that expensive to create. Ground Runner Revenge. Oh, we're fine. Yeah, we're fine, hunt man can handle that. Yeah, don't, don't sweat it, man, don't sweat it. You'll be fine. Good job. We've got more power yet again. That makes four geothermal generators. And suddenly that's enough for an advanced component assembler. We need steel components, gold, and plasteel. That's, uh, that's asking for a lot, but still, it'll be worth it. Infestation. All right, this is what we've been waiting for. All right, this isn't the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, but... Uh, I've weathered worse. I've weathered worse. You stand there. Let's just minimize the number that we have to fight at once. You get the hell out of there. This is not safe whatsoever. Oh, Jesus. You stand there. You have the flamethrower. You go there. Why do you have a club still? Right, you know what? Just WebMD, you're gonna be pretty busy after this anyway, so just go home. 200 IQ guy, you aren't involved in this. You go there, challenge man. You go there, you go there. And fuck. Let's just open this for a second. And here they come. Now yeah, walk back. All right, let's see if we manage to survive this somehow. Go ahead, fire that grenade like right there. Right there. That'd be good. That'd be great, actually. Yeah, get that grenade in there. Actually, go over there. I don't want you to deal with this. Oh, that's fantastic. Look, they're using the lasers. We've never dealt with an infestation very well in my entire career of playing this game. Do not, you know what, just go home. Don't use the grenade launcher anymore. Fortunately, they're fighting the robots and not us. Okay, most of the insects are on fire. It looks like Tank is down. He's... Oh my god, he got his left ear cut off. My word. Rescue Tank. Get him out of there. That's why we, we had you not fighting. Good. There, he's fine. Totally fine. Just no one gets set on fire and all is well. Are you on fire or is it the thing underneath you? I'm still trying to figure that out. All right, this actually looks completely fine. Wowzers, okay, everybody go home. Yep, that's good. Good riddance. Jesus. Destroy that shit. Uh, damn. I mean, also, just like, get out of there. It's very hot in there, too. I can't believe that we actually managed to uh, fend off that infestation. Well done, us. Good job, everyone. Thank you. We didn't die of heat stroke today. And we got all of this great insect jelly and tank is hopefully not dead. Death in five hours, all right. Uh, that's not great, but at least it'll give us a chance to uh, heal, heal. That was not great, but it could have been, it could have been worse, you know. We came back from it. We lost some stuff. I can't even remember all the stuff that we lost. Unfortunately, we lost our uh, flake. But these wounds can be mended. All right, uh, challenge man, go get out of there. Where is the rock? I need the rock right now. Why don't you go ahead, just uh, finish off all of these things. I can't believe it. I've never fended, I've never won against an infestation at all. It just sounds good. It sounds, the sound of victory. They didn't even destroy our sculptures for God's sake. Here go the rest of them. You can finish off that one. Good, yeah, take them out. Good, our robots can even do it. Great job, robots. Knew I could always count on you. Thank you, robots. I'd say one ear was worth it to survive that attack. Huntman did fine too. Yeah, he's just fine. All that happened was he got burned. We just need heat resistant clothing. I can't believe that. That was good. And look, we're already building the next thing. Good, good for us. Good for us. Well done. We are good. We are very good. Good job, The Rock. Yeah, eat that jelly. Why not? Oh, look at how good this is. Wow. Amazing. Look. Gold components, steel, and plasteel will all make advanced components. We don't even need to do it ourselves anymore. There it is. That's enough. That's enough. Only five hours to make advanced components automatically. Look, Chef Guy is starting to take apart all of the bugs that infested our horrible storage area. Thank God it was there and not this room. That would have been much worse. 
Let's just keep this room extremely dirty so that any infestations come in there. Clean everywhere else. We need to make one really dirty, just dank room. My god, look, that's so satisfying. He's cleaning everything. Great job, chef guy. We love you, chef guy. Jesus, look at all that. That's disgusting. Holy crap, it's time to make siege breaker armor. War bonds are coming back up in price. Manhunter, who even cares? Oh my god, look at all those arctic foxes. They can't do anything to us, though, because they're trapped over here. Wouldn't it be great if a raid came in over here at the same time? One can only wish. One can only wish and hope. I won't be hunting for a while, though. This siege breaker armor takes an ungodly long time to create, though. Over 1,000 work. I think it was like 1,500 work to create one thing of siege breaker armor. And who even knows what it'll be like that with quality. And that's with level 17 crafting as well. We can't give up this siege breaker armor, so we're going to build a repair shelf for when we're done with it. If anything happens to the Siege Breaker armor, god forbid, we're just gonna repair it. Here goes nothing. Okay. Okay, we're finishing work, and we've got the repair shelf. There it is. Uh, let's just do anything that's, like, really low on hit points. Yeah, basically anything we're just gonna want to put onto this shelf. Yeah, like weapons, clothing, you name it. Just put it on that shelf. Here comes Siege Breaker armor. Finish that. 20 work, and what quality did he get? What is it gonna be? What is it gonna be? He got excellent qual- oh my god. He got excellent quality, wow. All right, well, wear that. I mean, oh, that is kind of neat. Look at that. Siege breaker armor. It's badass. Definitely needs like a laser or something to go along with it. What's the advantage of robots over people? Well, robots don't need to sleep. They do need to charge though, so. We'll see how this shakes out. But I, I could pretty much work 24-7 now with the robots. Look, they're repairing the tribal wear in the repair machine. That's amazing. Look, it's, it's going up in quality slightly, ever so slightly, every few seconds. Okay, next we need to scale up our factory operation, so I have a new job. This may look kind of weird, but we're going to... We're gonna build pillars every few feet or so, but then we're gonna start to mine out just the entire area. I want this whole map hollowed. That way we can make this entire floor into a giant factory and then use that to comp produce components. I have no idea if or how this is going to work. We're probably going to get horrible infestations, but it's just, it's badass and that's a good enough reason. Good, now just mine literally everything. Mine all of, mine all of this. Oh, look at all of that. Isn't that garbage? Look at how much, that's crazy. All right, I'm feeling good. It's about day 49, 178k. We're about to destroy an entire mountain uh, to create a factory. We have all of the means now to do this pretty quickly. Um, and we are being controlled by robots. So we'll go more in this direction. Probably going to make three to four times as much progress in the next 50 days. So, All right, and we end day 50 constructing a... Really, an infirmary we're gonna need. Not only because they'll get hurt, but also because I want to install prosthetics in all of my colonists and make them superhumans. That's why I bought these war bonds. That's the whole point of paying into the stock market, after all. So that you can turn into a bionic human. Well, this has gone up and down. We're day 50, ending right here. I think I'm gonna stop it. $181,856.30. I just let them do their tasks. I uh, built a fridge today. This is nice. You like this. We're also preparing more steel because that seems to be a short supply. But other than that, I think we're I, I think we're uh, we're cooking with fire. I'm still pretty confident that we can get to a million dollars by the time we hit 100 days. I'm going to save every second I've got now through the end because time is precious. We made a lot of progress here. I think it's about to speed up too. Before I end, thank you to all of the modders who created any of the mods that I'm using right now. I'm gonna put a big list down below if you want to check them out. I pretty much just keep adding mods until the game is exactly what I want it to be. There are many mods here, but most of them are Vanilla Expanded, so... If you like what you see, go check out Vanilla Expanded. There's a lot of other ones, too. All of that will be down below. I'm gonna put it into a collection. I do like longer videos. They're ex it's exciting to have one or two videos be a whole series rather than 10 or 20. 
Do you want to see more challenges? Like, like, do you want to see one or two videos to a series rather than 10 or 20? I like that the bounds of this challenge are kind of set before we go in. You know, 100 days, a million dollars. That's pretty straightforward. You either get it or you didn't. Otherwise, major thanks goes out to my patrons. You are the robots. I love my robot overlords. As always, more philosophy in the future. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Good day.